Hello? Hello? Hey. Yeah. Ah, you're in the, the MACD today. Yeah. Ah, the one time uh, I'm at home, you're in the office. Okay. Yeah. <clears throat> so, how, how are you? I'm fine. I, I have so uh, sent over a, um, an updated uh, draft. Yeah. So I'm just I'm just having a look at it now. Um, I'll just share my screen so you can see what I'm looking at. Okay, so okay. I'll give you some public comments later, but just some quick things then. Uh, What's a rough, what do you mean by rough wave? Rough wave. You oh, mean rogue it's, wave? Oh, rough wave. It's, okay, so yeah, just make sure your terminology is okay. uh, is correct. Yeah. I will um, fix it. Yeah. Okay, and in terms of the writing, some of this, is this all your writing? Yeah. All your own writing? Yeah. So you've not you've not copied anything or used any um any language editing? No. Okay. So some of it reads quite differently from other parts. Um Okay, it looks like you've done some good reading now. Yeah. You've got some good background. I'll go over the text later and we can we can discuss the specifics. Um yeah, yeah just another thing just to make sure that you know most of your ref most of your figures are referenced. Mm -hmm. Just make sure all of them are. So I don't think this one is. So make sure you have a reference for all of your figures. Okay. Okay. Um okay, so you've gone over a few different uh of the mechanisms. And yeah, don't know if this is particularly relevant, but that's fine. Um, so you're talking about non-nonlinear non theories. If you're going to put equations, I'll just write them out. Write them out properly. Okay. Um, you can just write out the formal uh, Schrodinger equation. Um, there are there are other forms of this. So there's diff there's there's modified nonlinear Schrodinger equations which are a bit better than this, um, but we can we can discuss those. It's not particularly important for your project, um, but the the in general the types of NLS equations that people use that tend to be a bit different to this one these days. Okay. So what other sections are you thinking to have here? Mm. So I think this is a really good start. I think you probably want to say, you know, you want to somehow conclude that you're going to be focusing on this. Okay. At the end, yeah. Um, and it's not just waves going against the currents. We've also got this spatial focusing. So I think that's probably going to end up more your focus. So I think you've got these two aspects. You've got the general effect that waves become steeper when they interact with uh, opposing currents. And then you've got the fact that waves, um, yeah, refract and then, and then focus, the spatial focusing effect. So make sure that's all there. Obviously, this needs this needs splashing out a bit more. Yeah. Um. Yeah. So, plan, you know, a good start on the literature review. That's really good. Um. So it's nice to see you've added some stuff there. Mm -hmm. Uh. I, I I don't know if you've seen the marks from the previous version on the blackboard. Yeah. I. I see. It. Okay. Any questions on them? Mm, no.
Mm. Okay, so yeah, we'll, let's step away from the writing for a moment then. So, have you managed to get the Python working? Yeah, I su successfully run the test code. Nice. Yeah, that's good. It's it's very hard. So, what what did you do to get it working? Mm. I downloaded the you know, many times the the X array and the, the you know. Mm. What, are you, what, what, um, what are you using to run it? Are you using Jupyter Notebook? Yeah, Jupyter Notebook. But I'm not sure exactly which code to use and uh, what what to do for the for this okay. project. Do you want to share your screen? Can you show me now? Or? Okay. Oh, okay. Hmm. Okay, nice. Okay, so I wouldn't go on this one. So go back to tests. Um go back up one level. So if you click on ocean wave I'm trying to remember where the examples are. This one. Okay, not here. Um, Notebook, I think. What about what about tasks then? Oh, so there's some examples here in the notebook. Was that in notebook? Yeah, notebook. Yeah. Okay. So. Oh. Try. Okay, so we don't need to be reading in ROMs data. There was, there was a really basic test that I remember looking at. Um, yeah. Let me see if I can find it. Okay. No, no error. So what about idealized input? Yeah. Oops. Yeah. Anyway. Oh. Yeah. Idealized examples, yeah. So I'd probably take one of these idealized examples. Yes. And and move on from that. Yeah. Um there are many code. I don't know which one should I use for this project. Okay. So I can't remember which <clears throat> which one I based mine on now. Um but I just made some a really simple code. I don't actually have it installed on this computer. Um, 
But I just made a simple code that you basically define some, you know, you, you can see what the key functions are. If you can understand what the key functions are doing, then you can just write your own code from scratch and you don't need to do that many things. So all I was doing is trying to define some sort of jet and give a, a what you and um, B velocities to it. And then defining this wave tracing object with the wave tracing yeah. code. And then, then you've got options to set the wave period and the angles. So all you want to really be able to do then is um, define different uh, input velocity fields. So we can start with like, uh, you know, just bands of velocity, if you like, or Gaussian profiles um, or, or any other shapes. But once you've, once you've got a few different ways of generating those, you could you could create functions for generating different types of profiles and then defining the wave tracing object. And then all you're going to do is vary the water depth, the wave period, and the angle relative to the domain for the waves. You then got a bunch of other things like the number of rays and all this sort of thing, which we might need to play around with and increase. Um, so there's, there's a few things that we, that we can then play around with, but really all you need to do is be able to define some form of velocity field and then vary the, the three key parameters, the period, the depth, and the angle of the waves relative to that velocity field that you've created. Yeah. And there's a few things we can discuss around, around the outputs. Okay, so you can... Can you send me this code? Yeah, I can send you the code. Um, okay. But I, I just built it up based on a... I don't even know if this one works, but yeah, I can send you. Um, yeah. I have some different versions here, and I'm, un I'm unsure what's going on. But I started a basic code. Um, can I send it here? So, so I can use this code to start my project? Yeah, yeah you can try. Okay. Um, so it's just it's just it's just building on the uh, basic examples that are in there, right? So yeah. all I did was just pick out some of the key functions that I needed, and then realize how they're inputting the flow field, and then you just replace that with something else. This isn't particularly good code, and I'm not particularly good at Python, but the yeah. point is you can um, you can replace the the part where I'm defining some velocity field with some nice functions. Okay. Yeah, so we can replace that with a few different types of functions. So think about what sort of velocity fields you might want to be doing. Um, so you could think about ones that are like jets. You could think about ones that are, you know, half the flow field is current, half is not. You could think about ones that increase over the domain. Um, and you could make a bunch of different ones where you could say, okay, you've got a few functions that have basic shapes, and then you import sort of the values of the the magnitude of the velocities. And also perhaps like some parameters controlling the width or size of the of the current. Mm -hmm. And then all you're gonna do then is then loop through different wave cases. Can, can you show, show me an example? Use your code. But I don't have it installed on this computer. Oh, okay. But I can't show you. Um I thought I had it installed on this computer, but I can't I don't seem to have it at all. Uh uh, which is strange. I think what happened is I replaced my computer um, and it's on my old computer. So okay. it's in my office computer as well. I've got that working there, but not not on this machine. Otherwise, I would show you. But let me try and um, let me get it set up. I'll try and remind myself to get it working for the next time we meet. But also, you should be able to get it working as well by the time we next meet. Okay. So, something to do with uh yeah just a basic script like that um you might want to think about how you plot and interpret some of the outputs there's some examples that show how you plot and understand things like the ray density and things like that i can't remember if i've got that in the code or not this was as i, as I say i can't really remember what i'm doing here um but yeah you, you've got the uh to understand what happens to the height we need to understand the ray density. 
So there is no height in this ray tracing program. Yeah. So we the, calculate some form of ray the density. That's means means height. Well, it's proportional to it's related to the height. Yeah. Really Obviously, if we don't have enough rays, we're not going to get very good answers. So if we only have like 10 rays and we look at the density in a small grid, we could have densities of zero and one which doesn't tell us anything about anything. So we're going to have to have a lot of rays in order to have any good estimate of the height over a small grid if we're looking at spatial variability. So we can start off doing the computation through a small number of rays to make sure everything's working. But when we want to get final results, we're going to need to move for the heights anyway, we're going to need to move towards very high numbers of rays. Maybe to understand the problem and visualize, you, you, you need less rays because the rays are all going to be very confusing to look at if you have thousands of them yeah. um so you might have to run it different times to get different plots to understand the results um but yeah see if you can get something like that working i'll see if i can remind myself how i installed it because i installed it with uh in a, in a different ide and i didn't use um jupyter notebook okay. so did you find it easy to install in jupyter notebook yeah, I will write a report about how to know. That'd be good. I, I yeah. didn't do it in Jupyter Notebook. I did it in uh, yeah, a different IDE. But then it meant that I couldn't use that Jupyter Notebook examples. I could only write my own. Um, yeah, I, I send you later. The, yeah, sounds uh, good. I've never, I've never actually used Jupyter Notebook. Um, I was using uh, PyCharm, I think. Oh. Anyway. Yeah, so start with something simple anyway, um, and see if you can start running your own cases. I think the, the really the main thing you're going to have to code up is the different velocity profiles. Yeah. Because the, the code's already there for you to set the period, set the depth, set the angle. The only thing you're really going to change is that current profile. So as long as you can get a few base functions to generate those and then pass those to the wave tracing object, um, then you're fine. And then, then all you need to do is write loops that go over the different wave parameters that you want to explore and the different profiles you want to explore and store all of the outputs in a nice way. And then we can go and go through and do some analysis on the, on those outputs. So yeah, I think probably the hardest part was installing it. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. So any of other... Things you wanted to discuss? Mm. Not, not here. I will email you later. Yeah, okay. okay. Um, but yeah, so I would, yeah, try and get the code working. I think that's the fun thing. If we can get it working, you know you're then in a good position to start, you know, okay. doing the main project. Yes. In parallel, we can, we can discuss a bit later, you know, some of the writing, uh, what we might want to include in the methodology. Um, because yeah, you're going to want to include some of the underlying theory. Yeah. Uh, but in practice, you don't need it. So you you need to be careful not to claim that you're doing all this math. You need to be clear that you're using a package, but you need to at least demonstrate some understanding of of it as well. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, yeah. Drop me an email if you want to discuss anything further. I best go because um, I'm expecting. Yeah. And send send it send it a code from. Oh, uh, I did. Oh, it's in okay. the chat. Okay. Can you see it? If you go to the chat on Zoom at the bottom. Oh, okay. Got, got it. You have it? Thanks. Yeah. Okay, yeah. So I don't know if it's, uh, I don't even know what version this is, but hopefully it gives you an idea anyway that you only have a few functions you actually need. Okay. Yeah. And uh, you're only, you're generating the current fields rather than, um, or uploading them or downloading them. Yeah. Okay, cool. Okay. I'll yeah, see you later. Cool. Okay. Have a nice uh, day. Yeah. yeah, you too. Yeah.